Well, welcome back to class. This lecture is going to be a overview or kind of like a, a case study, if you will, of a certain type of project that we has a lot of mechanical electrical to it that we haven't covered very much in in the class so far. We haven't covered sort of the industrial side. And so I wanted to head in that direction, even though there's a lot of industrial things we could look at. Uh, I thought it would be a good a good thing to head in that direction for maybe a lecture or two. We'll see how many we do here. But uh, so this one we're going to look at a warehouse that's a cold storage warehouse, and there's an the existing warehouse, and so they're going to add this new building onto that right there. So let's just try and become familiar with the layout for a second, and then we'll dive right in. Okay, so we've got, I said it's a cold storage warehouse. So this part right here is the freezer. And it's even saying it's a negative 10 degree freezer. Elevation 4,265 feet above sea level. They're saying this floor is the relative 100. So over here, we've got the mechanical room. So how much lower is that? That is... 4265 that's 4261 so uh, somewhere around four feet lower and then uh, we've got over here we've got a cold dock and we've we've got uh, dock doors right here and it looks like uh, I don't know restroom restroom maybe some offices I'm not sure what's over here on this side okay the first thing I wanted to explain was the the type of construction it is so it's a tilt up building for the warehouse and the uh, in this case you see this concrete panel that has been cast on uh, the warehouse floor in this case or maybe it's a casting bed I can't really tell uh, but uh, they'll either pour a waste slab or they'll pour the actual warehouse floor and they'll form the walls meaning these walls right here horizontally they'll do block outs for the windows the doors the uh, everything that kind of passes through the the exterior of the building they'll they'll form that up uh, sometimes they put chamfer or other type of designs in uh on the casting bed or on the floor so that uh think of like a jello mold almost where they pour the concrete over all that and then you lift up the panel and it has a decorative uh appearance to it uh, there's you can see here this crawler crane uh lifting the lifting this tilt panel and plate and and it's a uh, got a fair amount of rigging this is all engineered the, the lift plans are all engineered this is uh, kind of the pretty typical warehouse and a lot of uh, industrial buildings use tilt so I thought I'd at least show what a tilt building is for a second I've got this uh, video down here Just look at it for just a second. Function has become one of the fastest growing. So they've got lifting eyes all over, casting into the. Uh, go back just a hair. Wish you could go. There we go. A little bit clearer. You can see embeds. Uh, you can see lifting points. Um, the 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 windows. I don't know if this is a. a storefront or something like that that they want but go by any warehouse and you'll see uh tilt buildings so let's just do maybe this uh yeah so this looks like some sort of office building and it's got some decorative look for brick in their tilt up explanation they show this let's run through this for a second they're just showing all kinds of looks like history of tilt 
I wonder if they show, I thought there was a video in here that showed how they did it. Hmm. Well, it doesn't really matter. I was just trying to, to give a, a bit of an overview and, and let's do that. Just, it's worthwhile. All right. Try and find back in the back right here. You're seeing all the forms where there looks like they've cast all these panels and that it sure looks like to me they're using the warehouse floor as their uh, their casting bed or where they're going to set up their form work and then they're going to lift the panels right onto uh, the foundation so you can see these these hooks right here this is all part of the the form uh, the exterior wall and so there's a gap if you can see it there's going to be a gap between the panel uh, the exterior wall and the uh, the slab and sometimes it's only a few feet but uh, they've got they're going to tie in the uh, the slab into it you would probably see this get lifted off and set over here and fill some of that with concrete there's a, a good view of them forming the, the tilt panels They'll end up placing the slab. The slab is a big deal in a warehouse and probably couldn't be overstated if you're going to build tilt buildings and warehouses. The warehouse floor is, it really is a big deal. You think it's just a concrete floor, but walk into places like, I don't know, Costco or sometimes even a newer Walmart and it's all a concrete floor, a lot of them polished or something like that. But they're they're incredibly flat, and they warehouses they they want them. Uh, the floor matters. It's getting a lot of traffic. That's what they're making money off of is storing and moving goods. So uh, they want. Uh, sometimes there's robotics involved with with different uh, machines moving, and the floor needs to be super flat. And, and we'll see here in a second that the floor matters again on the building that we're going to look at. But you can see embeds for for steel connections that they're going to use. You can see this guy putting down uh, the brick that was the the facade. So in this case, they're just doing that brick fa facade, not uh, not chamfer or something like that to to make the reveal look nice. All right, let's jump back into the drawings. So while we're on the topic of the tilt panel itself, let's look at uh, what what this warehouse is looking like for as far as the exterior paneling just I don't know just it's not really related to MEP but let's do it anyways you can kind of see that they have so right here this 15 feet 10 inch that's going to be one panel from here to here most likely uh, and then another panel then a 12 foot six panel. So these joints right here between the panels, let's just look at detail number two. So they have the concrete and then looks like some sort of backer rod and then some caulking. Okay, now let's go, go back. Then they've got Taking my my computer a second to catch up. I'm recording, I am. Okay, there we go. And then they've got this uh, this detail and that emblem there. So we could go to detail four. It took us to the wrong page, didn't it? I think it's on. Uh, 801 not 804 but the detail I'm looking for so these things right here are right here you kind of see the chain but I, this is kind of hard to tell if you're not familiar with the the tilt panel what that looks like so I've I found a Google map sort of thing and you can see those are the that detail we're just looking at uh, when they cast this, this face would be down. The side that we're looking at would be down on the, the slab. And so they'd put in different reveal strips or chamfer strips and 
make this emblem right here. And so when the panel gets picked up, uh, it has all this, this feature in it. Okie dokie. That's probably enough for that. So let's go back to the architectural and try and switch gears to MEP. From our first lecture, we one of our first lectures on plumbing, we were talking about uh, the underground plumbing and it relates to our, our footings, right? So here's a footing, HSS 12 by 12 by 3 eighths. That's a 12 inch by 12 inch 3 eighths wall. HSS is commonly referred to as tube still. I can't remember what HSS stands for. Then you have a W shaped column right there, W uh, 14 by 211 pounds per foot. Okay, so, but one of the things I wanted to show you is we have underground plumbing in this building. So check this out. We've got helical piers that we've got to put in. And the helical piers go along grid A, I believe. And so you can see these 14 or so helical piers. If you're unfamiliar with what a helical pier is, you got this uh, auger looking thing that they... Uh, twist and by just by turning it it'll screw itself into the the soils below and they just continue to add the coupler goes on top they can continue to add section after section after section and so let's just read a little bit from the structure there's 14 helical piers along grid A and so because the pier is not designed for tension the bolting of the pier uh, oh, between the pier uh, and cap is not required. So anyway, the point is, this is a vertical downward load that this is trying to accomplish to improve the, and it explains it pretty well here. The pier is designed to support the footings of the foundation and will not prevent the rest of the flat work or aspects of the building from soil movement. So by saying that the piers are only along grid A, and that's the area they're expecting the building not to move. So they've got some bad soils or they got a heavier load right there or something going on along grid A that uh, the, the existing soils can't, can't bear or they have too much uh, risk of uh, movement of soil. So they've put in these helical piers, right? So what would we go look at? We've done this before. We would make sure that we have nothing going underneath these specific footings because there's additional pieces of helical pier you can kind of see where the cap is right there the helical pier cap um how those are are uh, definitely something underground that we have to pay attention to when we look for mep so if we're going to call out the mechanical, well, plumbing or electrical subcontractor, most likely mostly the plumbing, that might be something I would mention to the, the foreman as they get on site. Hey, we've got a, or maybe I need to go make a quick review of the area and see what's underground. But we've done that before, so I'm not going to do that again. If you remember from one of the first lectures, we did that overlay. Uh, with the underground, so I don't need to do that one again. We did we did that right. So let's just continue in architectural for a second, and let's look at. Remember from the your drawings, you, anything that's this little dashed circle. I guess it's a rectangle. Calling out for sheet four hundred one detail one on four hundred one, right? So let's go look at that. I want to look at the wall types here and here. That's what I want to do first. Oh, the link's not going. 401. Okay. And then I was wanting to do that detail right there. So the cut section through the wall, I want to show you what that looks like. 304. So we're looking at detail one. So on that one, we have this footing pretty far down. Uh, we've got rigid insulation on the inside underground. 
and then we've got a concrete slab and this whole detail here we'll go through it in a minute but then they've got a two and a half inch IMP liner panel and we've done this in the past where we've shown you how to read the index to try and figure out what IMP is but I'm just going to tell you it's insulated metal panel so they've got a concrete tilt up panel and then ins insulated metal panel on top of it or, or up against it and then we've got a roofing system but uh, open web steel truss uh, or joist well, yeah, tr steel trusses being the right word okay that's that wall that we were just looking at um, 401 which is this wall let's look at this wall here um, 303 okay on the panel wall that is uh, the perimeter of this floor plan up here this guy this one's a different different construction wall section sorry all right having a hard time okay there we go that's what I want notice the panel looks different than our dock uh, cold dock this is the freezer side and so on this one we've got this uh, tilt panel but in the inside of the tilt panel is six inch rigid insulation so it's a uh, instead of having the insulated metal panel on the inside they sandwiched the insulation in the concrete of the tilt panel and this is showing it pretty cool how they they've got a foundation wall they've insulated the foundation wall <laughs> excuse me they sit the tilt panel on top of it we could look at this detail five I missed it somewhere where they're calling out now you got the concrete slab and uh, here they want they want uh, to put more insulation I think there's a better detail for it that shows the slab better calls it all out that's okay you don't have to do we don't have to be that specific sorry so what this looks like is they'll pour this uh, kind of a, a rougher slab and put vapor barrier down on it and even before that they've got insulation oh you know what we do need to show you the rest of it I'm being uh, I'm being dumb let's go to the wall section I need to find uh, I need to find that there we go there we go that's what I wanted so in this case they've got some ground warming system which is mechanical electrical plumbing we've got to look at that on the mechanical plans they've got some ground warming system they've got a concrete what they're calling a mud slab it's just not a very finished slab on that other detail I thought they had uh, some more insulation right there I thought on five yeah, look, they have the insulation come up here and up and over on uh, number five. That might be something in the, uh, the early bidding phase. We want to make sure we have that worked out. Make sure we know what we're doing here. Because on this detail, is not showing it. The insulation comes up here, but doesn't come underneath it on this detail. Then we've got the mud slab and the vapor barrier and the rigid insulation and then a slip sheet on top of that and then we got eight inches of concrete that's the floor surface that the the warehouse is gonna a forklift and people are gonna be walking on so what are you learning from this detail here we've got a lot of insulation here a lot of insulation here we've got this ground warming system let's just try to understand con concepts we go to the floor plan that we had this is a freezer it's like your refrigerator they're just We'll show you the, how they get that uh, this cold, uh, but but think of this as a large 
freezer. This is a food storage and distribution uh, warehouse. So they've got uh, all these racks, uh, racks and racks and racks. You can kind of see them everywhere. And uh, it's a big warehouse for for, for frozen food. Um, they're going to distribute frozen food from here. So it they want this to be insulated. And we go back to the wall sections here. Does that reflect what you what you'd expect? I don't know, but that's uh they found this to be an efficient way to to uh, make sure the 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 cooling in here is uh efficient, right? They've got insulation, insulation. Now, what's the deal with this thing right here from a concept standpoint? We understand we're trying to keep this space cold. The warehouse has got to be like a freezer. It is a freezer. What's this about? Well, they've got this, all this gravel right here, which is a poor conductor of heat. So they're trying to keep the temperature from going into the soils and freezing the soil. So they have this ground warming system and we'll get into that. But con conceptually, why would you want to do that? Well, you don't want this, so this frozen uh, temperatures here to translate all the way into the soils. You're going to see some, some heaving. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen a slab of concrete heave due to weather, due to cold, uh, frozen ground, but that's, that's not ideal. And if they got this ground frozen, it would be really difficult to, to, uh, thought back out. Hence they, they have this thermal break, thermal break. And so, uh, and then they have a, a ground warming system. And we'll get into that in more detail. Okay, you have, I think this is good for having a concept of what it looks like from uh, what the building's about. Let's go back to the floor plan and let's work on some MEP stuff for industry and docks. That's what I want to work on first is docks. So, I don't know, maybe this cut section will have it three. Okay, so they've got a cold dock over here that is the freezer that people are going to drive or walk through here and be able to load trucks there. Now, from a mechanical electrical plumbing standpoint, doors and docks aren't necessarily mechanical electrical plumbing, but they're dynamic. They do stuff. And I've tried to, in this class, I think it'd be worthwhile to think of things that do things and move and are operational or dynamic systems and those are the kinds of things that need the kind of coordination that we've been talking about this whole time in in this class so let's do a little bit of coordination and show you what might be needed for this door and this dock leveler uh, so let's look notice how the dock is like what they're going to do is back up back a semi truck into here and this piece is going to hook the semi trucks. Uh, um, I don't know what you call that thing at the bottom of the semi, honestly, but it's going to hook onto the semi truck trailer and keep it safe and not able to move. So, and then this dock thing is where the door is going to go up, and then this dock is going to go down and rest on the inside of that. Uh, that semi truck trailer and I have a little bit of a, a video to show you so let me show you that so this project is going to use the a dock leveler dock leveler system by right height and so I just went to their website and I like their little graphic here we'll play it right so the semi truck backs in locks in there nice job it's got sensors and everything you can kind of see they open up the door, somebody walks in there and sensors are now disabling uh, the control system. You can't operate it. So they're going to go cut the pliers, ram, okay, they get, they open up the door. Per, that's still disabled. Okay, hey, it's now able to uh, operate, person's able to lower the the dock leveler. Okay.
You guys got it. So the point here, though, is this. I want to show you that this might seem like, hey, it's a door. It's one of the last things we put in. But the reality is, let's go look at, uh, well, we have the product data here and the shop drawings down here. And let's look at some of the things uh, the shop drawing is calling for. You can see, I'm going to highlight it. Oh, that's not good. That right there. You see the embed? Then over here, we've got another embed right here. In the concrete, we got this. Uh, I don't know exactly what kind of bar, uh, some sort of reinforcing bar, I would assume, to hold it in. I don't, I don't know for sure, but there's embeds that we have to pay attention to. We've got more. Maybe those are bolted connections. But look, we got. A junction box on the outside by others so if our tilt panel goes all the way down which a lot of cases they do which the foundation would be somewhere down here I don't know it could be even farther down it could be down there the footing excuse me I said foundation but I meant footing footing could be way down here in the tilt panel even though we're not seeing it could be way down here so this junction box it looks to be surface mounted but where is the power coming from? It would be coming from the inside of the building, most likely. And so we, we need to be paying attention to uh, roughing in junction boxes, is what we, or getting power to this location. Um, and it says that it's by others. So the, the person installing this door doesn't do this junction box. We've got to get power there for them. We've got. Uh, Let's look at the next sheet. That shows more of this rebar that we were just talking about. Here's more of the, that, that same thing we were just looking at, that, that embed. And it, the embed's got uh, conduit again by others. Conduit. So this is saying the same thing, but there's a hole in it right here. So who's providing... The embed, embedded PC sheet, okay. So I would assume the dock folks are providing the embeds, but I haven't read through all this to make sure. I'll be looking for things that say by others. Make sure that we've got that right. <clears throat> you see that conduit that we need down in the floor because that conduit's back in here. You can kind of see it right here. So we've got a little bit of electrical to pay attention to. Some embeds to pay attention to. So how important is this document, this submittal and this shop drawing to the project to be able to move forward? We're trying to do concrete or footings or something like that. So one of the first things you do um, in a tilt is the slab itself. So if this slab was being placed and not a pourback slab, this would be a very, really, really important thing to get early on, right? Get more embeds. Oh, hey, all embeds detailed on this page are provided by others. So <clears throat> now they're saying that this has got to be somebody else providing them. So here's another good example with the electrical. We've got uh, the controller here, conduit that's got to wrap around and come up. It looks like it's surface mounted to the uh, to the panel it's possible that it might need to be in the panel depending on what could, what they want or does it need to be super clean or not maybe they want that to be able to be washable and cleanable i don't know sometimes they're in the walls so anyways there's some coordination that has to be done that's that's kind of the point electrical there's a fair amount you kind of see uh all the power coming in you got the conduit going different directions things that it's got to do and it's all by others so 
that's uh, some coordination that needs to happen. Kind of get a feel for what the submittals in, got in it. So we've got uh, the under level or seal. Remember, this is a cold storage and it's a cold dock, so they want it to be uh, they want it to be uh, insulated as they work and unload and unload things. There's the vehicle restraint bunch of controls so we already saw that little that little uh, animation that that showed a bunch of the controls and, and we've talked about controls in the past so I'm not too interested in going through it with you, you guys know what's involved there's commissioning involved startup involved making sure all this stuff functions so that's all going to be scheduled and coordinated a little bit oh I wanted to show this right here they've got lighting that's also there so more electrical maybe it's got uh, maybe it's tied into the system for controls I don't know I have to read more there's a, a bunch of schematic drawings for how that all comes together so we're talking somebody that's the kind of the startup programming person might need to do a little bit of programming is that in our schedule? Is that something we need to uh, make sure we're getting some folks? There's probably not a bunch standing by, so we've got to give them some lead time. Then we have the the coiling the excuse me the door itself. I don't know if I saw that in here. Thought I saw it. I'm sorry. I don't see the door, but they have this door. Uh, so this fast track door, this thing goes up and down really, really quickly. And that door is not here. That door is over here. It's on, uh, to go back to those, those fast track doors would be right here. Up and down. Want to keep this cool, uh, freezer they want it to keep it cold so the doors go up and down really quickly here here we just have some basic uh, I think that cut section kind of showed it pretty well the little door that oh yeah 302 yeah that door is gonna uh, come up on a track and stay out of the way so why is it not like your garage door and come like up like that well they want the space for uh, unloading loading they don't want to hit anything up there with the uh, the loads as they come in so it's 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 going straight up pretty cool I mean even this door itself needs to have power so it's something to pay attention to a lot of lighting up there next thing I want to look at is the racks so power we know for trying to take care of lighting we've we've covered a little bit of that but in this case it'd be an industrial one it scenario but not a whole lot of difference that we need to take, pay attention to but I do want to show you they have a racking here all right we've got all the the storage racks in the warehouse shown through here okay but uh, I want to show you how one of the things for mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and fire, right? So we deal with fire. And you can see, we've done this before, where you can see the the pipe that's dark and, and then the heads and stuff. And they're going to have a system overhead in near right near the roof, right near the, the metal deck of the roof. But there's also... Let's see if they have it right here. Come on. Computer's really having a hard time. Let's do that one. That's what I wanted. After the rack gets installed, you can see that the storage rack, it's going to get, uh, you see that? Linear detection. And then we've got a sprinklers and sprinkler heads throughout there. So even after the building is built, we've got to make stub. I don't know exactly where it feeds. I didn't look at it close enough, but I assume it feeds from the ceiling. 
not the ceiling, but the the uh, right below the roof would probably be where the pipe is that's coming into here. And so we've got to have a couple different construction sequences uh, on the fire suppression system. And we need their racking in order to complete the fire suppression system. Kind of a interesting way of... Uh, Got, got more to do, right? So industrial, we might not going to see this kind of stuff in the, the the other things that we've talked about so far, whether they be homes or offices or dentist office or right or the the school. All right, let's look at some more things related to the concrete floor. What I want to look at is what this thing is right here, and. <clears throat> We've talked about floor drains in the plumbing, but let's uh let's go to the blow up of that room and let's look at this. So we've got the a trench drain now running the length of the mechanical room, and you see this <clears throat> one slash eight inch per twelve. So the floor is going to slope the direction of this arrow. This is going to be the low point, obviously, because it's got to have the drain. The water wants to go to the drain as they clean out the mechanical room. But uh, so we've got this trench drain that, that, that runs the length. We could go to the plumbing and see where it drains. I don't think we needed to look at underground plumbing because we've done that before. And it's not much different. But this is something you haven't seen before. So let's just take a look at the trench drain submittal. And that's what uh, the trench drains look like in this in this uh, scenario. They've got these different sizes that... that depending on what's been ordered or what's been spec uh, so they just connect the uh, the sections together say they're using this one they'll have a whole bunch of these sections prior to placing the concrete for that mechanical room they'll uh, they'll support this trench drain make sure that and as you put the different sections together uh, usually the, the they're built so that the bottom of the flow the flow line of the trench drain just naturally creates the slopes so you can keep them all the same height and then the bottom of the box kind of changes heights a little bit see so the water will flow along the end yeah. uh, they had a picture of it like that so we've got a collections collection box here with uh, the the trench drain and this can be this can be flat but the bottom of the the trench drain is sloping usually is the point Sometimes you can have this slope, but not, no, that, that's a better example. Look right there, right? So it's kind of showing that's the bottom of the box, bottom of the box. It's all sloping, 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 bottom of the box, and then finally here. So what does that mean? I mean, it, depending on what, how, how long this trench drain is and how many sections there are, how deep it actually gets, uh, we could we could end up having uh, I'm gonna go while I'm talking. You could have something fairly deep. So as we work deep to shallow in construction, we, that's the rule of thumb, right? Deepest to shallow. We might have a little bit of a something to work out here with the trench drain. How deep is it? If it's really long and it's got a lot of sections to it, it could end up being pretty deep. Kind of get a feel for. Anyway, that's something we haven't talked about. Uh, so here is the plumbing underground. Here's our trench drain. It's going to collect in the middle. going to go underground to and out. Probably connect to the civil with something, that note, right? We've done that before. But uh, this is a good example of, this is a mechanical room, and a lot of times you see uh, electrical being run in the floor slab. So that conversation about deep is to shallow. It's probably not a very deep uh, trench drain but still it's something that if the electrician's thinking he's gonna he or she they they are going to uh, use the the floor slab to run a bunch of conduits and stuff um, I might need to just remind him hey you guys gotta gotta be deep for the uh, below the trench drain right they're gonna try and run like panel here and then something they're gonna power up over here some equipment because this is a mechanical room that might be a little thing to work out. Nothing big, but just something that's unique to the in industrial side of things. 
I don't know if it's unique to because there's other trench trains everywhere. I shouldn't have said that, but definitely in an industrial uh, application, they're they're pretty common trench trains. All right, when we were looking at this <clears throat> tilt wall, I showed you this ground warming system. And that's what I want to talk about next is all the piping that's in this ground warming system. So let's go look at, uh, first thing I think we need to do is go to the mechanical. Okay. So let's go to here and kind of, kind of pay attention. I'll do an over, I'll, uh, I'll split the screen so you can see it better. So this is going to take a couple different disciplines to pay attention to, to see the system as it works. So we're going to look at this room right here. Oh, sorry. This one. Sorry. There we go. And we've got an MAU. What is an MAU? Makeup air unit. Makeup air unit is different. It's on the roof of this me uh, mechanical room. Uh, you might think it's a rooftop unit. It's not. Rooftop units are completely different than makeup air units. So let's go look at the makeup air unit here in the submittal and uh, zoom in just a hair bit. Look at the airflow diagram. This one's a cut section from the side. This is from up above. They have a hood, a motorized inlet damper so they can open and close this damper. And then they have a supply air going down and notice gas and electric box. They're not talking a whole lot of stuff in here. But you know that it's gas, so it's providing heat. And I know that makeup air units would have that, and especially in what they're trying to do. Uh, so without getting too detailed into the makeup air unit, because they're super simple, it's a fan, and it's got a heating element, probably a heating coil with gas. And the outside air is coming in here, and it's coming down the supply air duct. Or from the side, you can see it outside air through the, the damper, getting warmed up so they got the gas rough in here and probably this is the heating section here and then we've got uh i would assume this is the blower that's the heating section and then that's or maybe the blowers here and uh heating section i don't know need to look at it in more detail maybe pull this in the middle maybe this has got it shown mm. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's going down. I would, I think the way I'm looking at this is right that that blower is sitting right here, and it's uh, pulling air across the heating coil and down. So, anyways, it's heating up air. 100% outside air is getting warmed up and going down. So, where's it going? Let's go back to uh, this drawing here it gives you a cut section too so look at this so it's there's our makeup air unit it's got the supply duct coming down and kind of two ducts it looks like coming down and that these two ducts look at this this is super interesting it's there's the floor right here they're going below the floor with this air what are they doing? So we need to look at the uh, plumbing drawings here. Bring the plumbing drawings over. Okay, now try and when notice, okay, just keep in mind for a second. Make up air. Uh, it's taking outside air, heats it up, puts it down to below the slab. That air is coming in right there. Do you see that? Let's go back to uh, the... the did I get it? Oh, I did something wrong. Sorry. Whoops. Not that. There. Okay. Why do I keep doing that? Click that sheet now. Okay. There we go. We just did that side section. And remember, this is now the roof that we're seeing here. The roof with the makeup air unit that's heating up there, putting it down this duct. And notice like the grid line. Grid line 2 and D.1. Do you see that? There's D.1. Grid line 2. 
it's the same location it's right there that's the piping that it's connecting to what does note number three say yeah tight supply duct from makeup air unit so this piping right here is below the slab that's the stuff that was uh, right here it's in this gravel it's the the ground warming system so you're it's almost like uh, <laughs> I, it, I don't know how to describe it just just a bunch of pipe under the under the slab in this gravel and it's going one branch is going that way or or one main is going this way one main's going that way and it's just sending warm air uh, I didn't look to see the temperatures. I, sh I should, but that's not important right now. I'm just trying to show, hey, this is going over here. And I didn't really see how it's supposed to end. Uh, maybe there's little vents and stuff in the in the foundation wall. I didn't really look at the terminations. But the point is, this is so unique. This is like, uh, we haven't talked about this kind of thing at all. Really unique industrial application for heating the space below the slab with a makeup air unit and a bunch of plumbing underground so when we said early on there's plumbing underground there's a lot of plumbing underground so there's not just scheduling but sequencing making sure the want to want to see a cool note look, i kind of geek out about this look we got underfloor piping to be coordinated with structural columns why would it need to be <laughs> coordinated with structural columns? Well, they just should have showed it in a grid pattern. But yeah, there's columns and footings everywhere. And so the, the big footings that are spread throughout here for the moment frames, um, maybe I should just show you real quick. I mean, it's worthwhile. Let's go grab the uh, structural again. You guys, so, so there's spot footing, spot footings. I wonder if this would be a good uh, cut section through A. Yeah, I mean, they've got to get the piping around this. What else do they have to get the piping around? Remember the helical piers? Yeah, you remember the helical piers. Kind of cool stuff, in my opinion. Different things to sequence, different, the same kinds of issues. It's going to work top to bottom deepest to shallow the I mean in underground excuse me underground's deepest to shallow uh, but lots of fun things to work out through there right got some cool interface pieces that need to coordinate between mechanical and electrical that I mean mechanical and plumbing right there uh, a lot to coordinate for uh, earthwork and plumbing in in the floor space this is a complicated detail to work through all that uh, industrial applications might I don't know if I uh, find them interesting or not but I, I think I dig that kind of stuff I think it's pretty fun well let's stay with mechanical for a second and we know this is the mechanical room so let's just look at we saw the makeup air unit described how that thing is working now we have an exhaust fan we've got an exhaust fan here so this mechanical room it's how is it exhausting the air well it's got outside air louvers right here down down in the bottom or maybe they're not in the bottom we should probably look and see where they were um yeah yeah the louvers are seven feet they're pretty big right and the, the louvers in the wall just going back to that so that the air is coming in here there's coming in here and it's being exhausted through these exhaust fans. I should. I'm, I lied. I'm sorry. Look at this. It's a separate room right here. It's got its own louver. So this exhaust fan is just pulling air. Uh, it's creating a vacuum in this space, and air is coming in here, right? And then this exhaust fan is creating a vacuum in this space. Air is coming in here. Air is coming in there. I'm not going to spend the time to look at the sequence of operation. It's probably based off temperature or something like that. Um, but in the winter time, it's got an electric unit heater. This little restroom right here, we've got an exhaust fan and electric water heater. Well, that's not much. I mean, 
that's pretty simple relative to some of the other things we've looked at from an office standpoint. They do have an office in this place. Um, kind of give you the overview. There's a little office area. It's saying break room and hall and shipping office and trucker's lounge or whatever you want to call that. So we'll go look at that. And this is way simpler than the dentist office that we looked at. <laughs> a lot simpler than the hospital that we looked at with the zones. And check this out. We have one thermostat. We have a fan cool unit attached to this outside heat pump. Uh, so we know that it's it's basically just, yeah, you got this system connected right here. Got a little bit of outside air right here. Uh, little exhaust fan there. And so we know that this this is just a fan coil unit and it's going this way, jumping a little bit of air there, putting some air there, putting some air there. We've got an air transfer duct right here, All right? Thermostat. So how many zones? One zone for those three rooms. We've got the shipping room. We've got a fan coil unit here. Uh, I don't. I have to go look and see if the the heat pump over here is connected to uh, both FC FCs, but uh, it doesn't really matter. We've got an outside air supply. Uh, we've got uh, ductwork, right? It's pretty simple. Got a little exhaust fan. Uh, how many zones? One zone for those rooms right there. That's pretty easy. So oftentimes in this industrial space, there's some offices and stuff, but usually not too complicated. All right, so the last thing we want to look at is the refrigeration system. And looking at the architectural drawings for a second, in your mind, how do you view this freezer? It's a 90,000 square feet. You got 9,300 square feet cold dock. What do you relate this to? Is it a really big refrigerator? Well, the panels are all insulated. The floor is insulated. And think of like a really big freezer or refrigerator. What would it be missing? We've talked, we've, uh, in our previous lecture on refriger refrigeration, uh, said a refrigerator is the same as same principles as uh the how your house gets cooled with the compressor condenser on the outside and evaporative section on the inside of your house with the blower fan in the furnace right so that's what same thing refrigeration principles again much larger they're different equipment for sure uh, similar principles or and uh but but let's let's look at this for a second. Here's the schematic of it, but we don't want that yet. Let's look at this. All right. So you can kind of see grid five, grid five, and about A4. Um, go here. Grid five. So right down the middle and starting on A4. I'm not sure why they why they did it that way. The A2s and the, the grid system seems off a little bit. Anyway, if we take the ref the mechanical room right here as a reference point and say it's going all the way there, so there's a bunch in the middle, and there's some over here in the in the cold uh, storage room. And when I say some, what do we mean? Well. Uh, Kind of think of each of these pieces right here as the condense, excuse me, the uh, evaporative section and the blower of the uh, refrigeration cycle. So let's look at what these are right here. And we could go to uh, the, the submittal. They're kind of hard to view, that, but if we did, if we looked at the side view, it's not too bad. We're seeing airflow here. Um, there's going to be a fan either here or here and there's a coil in there but i think it's easier to view the evapco website's document so let's go look at that all right now i've got it pulled up so 
This is the SSTHB model number. So we're looking at the SSTH. I don't know where the B is in this, but uh, it's going to look something similar to what you're seeing here. Uh, rather than four, it would be three sections put together. And I think you could probably put as many sections as you wanted together in my mind. You'd probably put whole whole rows of this together. So anyways, there's a bunch of these and, and look at look at what they call them. We try and get the page open here for a second. Uh, superior stainless technology evaporators. I mean the page <coughs> excuse me referred to as evaporator. So what is it got in it? It's a fan, coil, and refrigerant. In this case, the refrigerant is ammonia. Uh, there, it's not the uh, other refrigerants that we are talking about for residential or uh, light commercial. So in this case, they're they're doing large amounts of uh, refrigerant, and that would be ammonia. And but sim similar similar process where you're going to get high pressure. Uh, liquid brought to the evaporator there's going to be some sort of expansion device allowing the refrigerant to go to the low pressure side which will do a phase change right and then it'll want to do that phase change in order to do the phase change it needs to pull heat out of somewhere so it's going to have air in the refrigerator or in the uh the warehouse it's already pretty cold but the, all that matters is that the refrigerant get colder than the air so the refrigerant go, goes to that evaporative direct device, I mean, excuse me, the uh, um, expansion device, there we go, and then uh, changes pressures, and it wants to turn into a gas again, so it's blowing air across that coil. You don't really see the coil, but you can kind of see the tubes back here. You can kind of see the coil back in there. So air is getting blown across that and uh, they're having a heat exchange right so the air is getting colder the refrigerant's getting warmer or the refrigerant's getting energy from the air and uh, it's definitely getting warmer but not necessarily warmer than the air i mean warmer than the air we can blow across it so it's getting energy it's getting heat it's taking the heat out of the air and and i don't know which direction the fan's going i don't know if the fan's going across or it's going out or I assume hard for me to know um, I kind of feel like it's 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 blowing out to the left is what I would guess and take us somewhere on the bottom or on the back or on the top I'm not so sure but it doesn't really matter what where how the fan works just know that that's what we're talking about right so we have these evaporators what are the other pieces that you know about in uh, the refrigeration cycle. Let's go back to the refrigeration. And uh, we've got compressors right here. Compressor, compressor. And then we've got, they're calling them vessels, but uh, it's going to be, and I'm a little confused on what these vessels are doing. I think they're acting as heat exchange and storage of the refrigerant. So not not completely sure other than that their components within the system. I haven't studied it enough to know. But uh, larger systems, compressors are right here. We have like a way to store the material and do heat exchange in here. Uh, it's also got a cooling, uh, not a cooling tower, a condensing unit. So the condensing unit is up above it. So we see this condensing unit up here. So what do we know about condensing units? Do we have, that's that using similar terms than the residential side, the condensing unit was outside. It was making the refrigerant that already got compressed from the compressor the, on, the, on the residential units. The compressor is actually on the inside of the condensing unit. In this case, they've got a completely separate condensing unit. All right, let's look at that for a second and have it open. So the inside of the uh, condensing unit, I know there was a graphic that showed it pretty well. Is that it on this page? There we go. So it's got uh, 
the hot the gas or vapor in so we know that this is the refrigerant in that's a compressed and it's warm or hot right it's in a gas phase it's going to go loop back and forth back and forth and back and forth and as it loops back and forth it's got water dripping on it and they've got kind of a uh, little got water and air kind of going over the top of the pipe or the coil itself so if you look at that the refrigerants in there tube wall water non-contact areas right there so anyways we've got water just dripping over these coils with air being forced across it or another option here we spray water below anyway there's lots of different options for these things but what do we know that if you cool off the gas on the refrigerant it's going to start to condense into a liquid and be main, maintain the pressure and on its way out it's going to be in its liquid state but still under high pressure and so the some of that water is going to get very warm and they're going to discharge it out some of it's going to drop to the bottom and they're going to recirculate it back up to the top and add some more water so they can constantly cool that and use air to help cool it as well anyway that's pretty cool but you know what a condenser does instead of having a fan air blowing across the coil it's water and air in this case they've got something here with glycol and i'm thinking i didn't do enough studying this forgive me i'm thinking that there's a glycol condensing water system as well so there's some glycol water and i think that this this uh uh, condensing unit is also creating condensing or cold water uh, to be able to help the system as well. I'm not so sure. Didn't spend a lot of time studying how this all worked out. Uh, but there were some cool resources online that I read a little bit about. And then just looking at the schematic um, that's pretty detailed. You can see those were the uh, evaporators in the down through the, the middle of the the refrigerator portion and then the cool dock had these this style it was a different brand uh, let's let's at least show you how i found that so we're looking they're doing the same thing we've done before right so here's the compressor they're using a frick uh two different model numbers on the frick and then the evaporator evaporator section schedule so uh, the one in the freezer they're using this one by evapco the one that's in the cool, uh, the cool dock, that one's the ones are using used by Frick. I'm telling you the model number. Here's the condenser. So it's the Frick. This uh, I thought I had that open. All right. So here's that evaporative uh, section. That excuse me, the uh, evaporative condenser, XLP2. So it's just a model number. There's a bunch of options that look like you could have with it, uh, different configurations and stuff but the uh that's the model number and that's when we went to the uh, refrigeration drawings we have the condenser schedule xlp2 right with some additional codes to be able to tell you how it's configured and then we have the vessels and we were looking at those these are the different vessels right here aiding in the different compression uh different cycles and i think it's adding some heat exchange in there like i said or making it so I was reading about this blue one. Uh, it's reading that it, that it helps uh, with the refrigeration uh, flash, uh, maybe making it more consistent. Sounds like so. The think through the refrigeration and what do we need uh, to to uh, we got a lot of piping that we need to be paying attention to on the schedule. We've got electrical interface. We've got controls. We've got commissioning that we got to pay attention to. We've got things hanging from the ceiling. Um, going back to that for a second, we've got things hanging from the ceiling. So uh, it, this has all been designed, but it's maybe not fully coordinated. So using the shop drawings and things to coordinate uh, where the structure, uh, the points are for that. Uh, there's usually quite a bit of room up in the, the, the ceiling space of uh, a warehouse to be able to coordinate and make sure we have room for this piping it's usually not a problem but still we've got a fair amount of work hooking up electrical controls piping up in the ceiling after the structure's up and 
And when we talk about something that, that works as a complete system, it's, it's definitely something where we've got multiple components, lots of piping, and the startup sequence is going to be uh, unique to this system. So it, it's got a fair amount of work to do once, say, you definitely wouldn't want to be like that guy I was telling you about in that one lecture. He's like, when are you going to start the, the compressors? Starting a compressor isn't going to do much for the entire system. Uh, you have to have the whole system operational. So you want to be asking more questions like what stage of startup are you in or how what have we been able what lines have we been able to purge so far those kinds of questions for refrigeration if you're looking for status or what pieces of equipment have we started what what pieces of equipment are completely uh commissioned those kinds of things how's the system functioning as a whole those are some good questions but uh it's the same principles and uh, one thing I don't think I told you is that this one is up on the roof. I forgot to mention that. So we've got a bunch of stuff in the mechanical room itself. We have that view. We'll do it with architectural drawings. So there's a bunch of equipment here, and then there's something up on the roof. And so how do we get the equipment in the space? Well, there's a door right here and there's a double door right there and I don't know if these fit through there but we might need to leave out some panels or walls or something to be able to get the equipment in and out of here or leave sections of the roof out to be able to hoist it in with a crane but logistically we got to figure out how to get all this equipment in here and work with that subcontractor that's going to do this work right there's there's a fair amount just in this mechanical room just to figure out um, logistically we did that lecture where we were talking about putting a rooftop unit with a crane. Uh, similar kinds of questions need to be asked about the, uh, the mechanical room and how we're going to be putting that together logistically. Well, thanks for letting me walk you through this and we'll, uh, we'll see you in the next class.